Hello everybody and welcome to the very first episode of The Dog Show that actually isn't a joke. Well, I guess if you consider those other videos I did funny, but that's besides the point. My point is that I am turning a new leaf and making a video that is actually informative. Now this show is actually kind of a pilot for a show that I will be continuously doing on my other channel, Kurt Dog Gaming. So if you want to go ahead and subscribe there, you'll get more of this if you like it. And every now and again, I'll do what I call a WiiWare special right here on the Nintendo World Report TV YouTube account. So uh, let's get things started. Now if you're like a lot of gamers, you felt the massive drought in software during the Wii's lifespan. But if you're like me and latched onto every little bit of Nintendo news that trickled out, you knew there was an absolute treasure trove of games only available through the Wii and DSi's online shops. Even though Nintendo did a terrible job of letting people know about these games, a lot of them still managed to gain a decent following and still managed to become some of the best games the system had to offer. Today I'm going to be taking a look at a game published by Nintendo on WiiWare called Excitebike World Rally. Now, Excitebike was one of those early, early black box NES games that honestly wasn't all that good, but still kind of had a legacy to it. When the Wii originally launched, Nintendo put out a racing game called Excite Truck, which was kind of a spiritual successor to the NES game, followed by Excite Bots Trick Racing a few years later. Unfortunately, I do not have a lot of my Wii games with me right now, so we're stuck looking at the lesser known title uh, here on WiiWare. But hey, even though those games had like trucks doing crazy flips and tricks and bugs doing the same thing, I'm sure this game is going to be just as crazy, right? Oh. Now I gotta say, my first impression of the game was a bit underwhelming considering I was just coming off the excellent Excite bots. But hey, gameplay is king, right? I'm sure the game is just as exciting. I mean, look at that. The crowd is going... mild. Oh, okay. I guess I should just play the game. Well, to be honest, the game itself is pretty solid. It plays and looks a lot like the original Excite Bike, only better. The game actually has a bunch of different stages based on different cities in the world, but other than background scenery and the music, the tracks themselves pretty much use the same kind of obstacles. Your hills, your mud patches, your whatever this thing is supposed to be. Despite a bit of sameness, sometimes this actually works to your advantage. Having some of the obstacles show up over and over will make you more familiar with them, giving you a window of opportunity not to screw up. This allows you to probably pull off boosts and stunts better, since you're going to need it. In order to get an S rank on every single track, you're going to have to perform almost perfectly and finish two laps in a certain amount of time. No fucking around. Do you want another color for your damn bike? Then you better learn to make that jump, son! The game even uses motion controls to help you level your bike when you make big jumps and do wheelies. Now, a lot of people hate motion controls, but I feel like they work in a game like this. It's easy to over or undershoot things like jumps and landing level with the regular D-pad or an analog stick, but having something you can physically adjust in 3D space always felt like the perfect way to get pinpoint accuracy. Well, when they work, and thankfully they work here. After many, many tries and many, many restarts, I finally get S ranks on every single track. And guess what? Everything still isn't unlocked. Basically, in order to unlock all the bike colors, you need to race friends and random people online. So, uh, let's head over to the Wi-Fi connection section and... Oh... I forgot... So yeah, basically a third of these colors are forever locked because Nintendo Wi-Fi connection shut down back in May. But hey, at least we can make some of our own tracks that we can't share with anybody. So I would go ahead and call this one... Buttons. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I forgot to finish it. Oh well. Anyway, the game is still available on WiiWare. I mean, $15 is a bit of a steep asking price. But if you want something with way more content than the original NES game, uh, this is right up your alley. Just don't expect anything too... exciting. I'll see myself out. 